this is Mr. Evans. This video is going to look at inflation. Inflation is a part of the economic environment and of course with all of these aspects of the economic environment that we're looking at we're considering the opportunities and threats presented by them uh, for businesses. So what is inflation? Inflation is a sustained rise in average prices measured by CPI, the Consumer Prices Index. If you want to have a look at how that's calculated, there's plenty of information on that online. But basically, inflation is a measure of average price levels across an economy. Um, the Bank of England, <coughs> who are separate to the government, but the government has mandated the Bank of England, they've given them a target to keep inflation at 2%, and uh, they give them a little bit of leeway with that, plus or minus 1%. So anywhere between 1 and 3% is okay, 1.1%, 2.9%, they're okay, but we don't want inflation going either higher or lower uh, than, um, than that kind of <coughs> sweet spot there that's being identified. Um, 2% is believed to create macroeconomic stability as it allows for some price rises to occur, meaning that businesses can put up prices and consumers, you know, they kind of expect prices to go up a little bit and that allows businesses to make a bit more profit, pay their workers a bit more, give a bit more back to shareholders, um, you know, uh, provide some profits for, for investment in the future but it's stable enough so planning is easier for both businesses and households. If prices are increasing by a predictable, low, sustainable amount every year, you can predict, you know, it makes you confident in taking out a loan, for example, because um, uh, you'll be able to, you, you know, you know that your other costs aren't going to go up um, so dramatically that you can't then repay that loan. Okay, it makes your budgeting a lot easier. So it just creates confidence in the economy. Here is a graph showing inflation, uh, the UK inflation rate from 2012 to uh, right up to today, which is the 1st of September 2017. There's the kind of 2% magic mark along there. And the uh, acceptable band is here. And you can see that actually before 2012, we were above that acceptable band. It was in the 3%, 4%. I seem to remember it was 58 two percent or five point one percent in the in sometime in uh 2011 or 2012 so inflation was higher than we wanted it to be then inflation um came down and it actually we experienced a short period of deflation i think in uh i can't remember was it april 2015 um when prices actually fell which sounds great but it's not such good news for businesses because um uh, because you know, if, if prices are falling, what happens to your incentive as a consumer? Well, if you know that prices have fallen um, and you think that prices are going to keep on falling, what are you going to do? Well, rather than spend your money this month, you wait till next month and the prices go down again and then you delay your uh, purchase onwards. So that can be a problem as well. That's why we don't like low inflation because it stops people from spending money because they want prices to go down even more and that becomes a real problem. Okay, so um, we're back up into that kind of sweet spot now. Um, inflation started to creep up quite rapidly after uh, Brexit. And you know from my last video that the price of sterling has collapsed in this same period or has, has, has depreciated a lot. So part of the um, reason for this increase in inflation is that actually the products we've imported from abroad have got a lot more expensive because the value of the pound has fallen. So all of these different economic factors kind of play into each other. Um, and it is a really fascinating area of study. So what causes inflation? Well, there are uh, three main causes. One is demand pull inflation, which occurs when aggregate supply is unable to keep up with the increases in aggregate demand. In other words, this is like, you could almost consider this as all right, we don't like inflation, but disflation is occurring because the economy is doing really well. Consumers and businesses are demanding lots of raw material, lots of products, um, and the supply in the economy is unable to keep up, which increases scarcity and prices creep up as a result. So <coughs> this form of inflation um, is 
you know, it comes with advantages, basically, which is it tends to go alongside the economy doing quite well. Cost push inflation occurs when there's increases in the cost of production. So when wages go up, businesses need to pay more money to their workers. That increases their costs and those costs might be passed on to consumers. Raw materials, if the price of oil increases um, or the price of other raw materials goes up, businesses need to pass on those prices. And of course, taxes are a cost of production as well. Cost push inflation can be far more damaging because, of course, the price of oil or the price of other raw materials can go up even when the economy isn't doing very well. So with demand pull inflation, at least people have got jobs and things like that. Often with cost push inflation, it occurs at the worst possible time. Um, price of oil goes up when no one's got a job anyway, um, and that creates all sorts of problems uh, because we get inflation rising prices when people don't have much money. Um, uh, finally, inflationary expectations have an impact. I kind of talked about inflationary expectations before when I was talking about rising prices, uh, sorry, falling prices. Um, again, rising prices um, can also kind of it becomes a, a, um, a self-fulfilling prophecy. All right, if you think prices are going to go up in the future, what do you do? You buy the product today, um, so you miss out on those rising prices. That creates scarcity and drives up prices. Okay. So um, it's a complex picture, but uh, they're the main causes of inflation. So as we're going through these, try and think of the op opportunities and threats as these um, pros of low inflation and the cons of high inflation as, as we go through them, okay? Because they, they will represent opportunities and threats to businesses. So if we've got uh, low inflation, it encourages people to spend their money before prices increase, which increases keeps the economy moving. Um, it means that businesses can reduce their real wage bill by raising uh, wages by less than inflation. Okay, so in other words, if inflation is going up by 2%, prices are increasing by 2%, businesses could offer their staff a 1.5% increase in wages. Now, at least wages have gone up, okay, it's not by as much as inflation, um, but that might keep workers happy, but it also means that in real terms, businesses have cut their wage bill. Okay, if, they're, if the prices that businesses are selling for are going up by 2% and wages increase by 1.5%, that's gonna, if you think about the formula, employee costs as a, um, as a percentage of turnover, turnover's rising 2%, employee costs are going up by 1.5%, and the business is, has made itself more efficient. Um, price stability increases the ability of individuals and organisations to plan their finances. Um, so, <clears throat> you know, taking out loans, working out repayments, working out how much your raw materials are going to cost in a year it makes your budgeting much, much easier, much more likely to be accurate than if there's high inflation. And finally, um, low inflation erodes debt over time. Um, you know, if you take out a bank loan of £100,000 to buy a machine Today, let's say we want to buy a new piece of equipment that costs £100,000, we take out a five-year loan. Well, today, that £100,000 buys a lot more um, things than it would do in five years' time. The real value of that £100,000 will be lower in five years' time. I won't be able to employ as many workers. I won't be able to buy as many computers um, in five years' time. So that, that £100,000, it's worth me borrowing it today because over time, the value of that debt is eroded and when I pay back the debt um, actually the amount of money I pay back okay I'm just gonna have interest on it as well but um, that hundred thousand pound will be worth less in the future than it is today so what are the cons of high inflation and we consider high inflation anything really um, above three percent above the government's target well it reduces consumer and business confidence which can lower spending and lead to recessions um, high inflation discourages investment um, as firms are less likely to predict when their investment will be returned. So if inflation is running at 10%, for example, um, it's very difficult for a business to know what's going to be going on in the economy. Okay, Why would they take out an investment today if they're not sure that consumer confidence is going to be high enough? Um, if uh, they're not sure what their selling price is gonna be because prices are changing. So it makes it very difficult to predict when an investment will be returned, which makes firms less likely to want to invest today. 
high inflation increases prices, which is going to increase reduce our international competitiveness. So if inflation is running at 10% in the UK and 2% in Europe, prices the price of goods produced in the UK is increasing much more rapidly than they are in Europe, and that's going to make us far less competitive. Menu costs are interesting. So, okay, so uh, it's called menu costs because if uh, restaurants' prices change, what do they need to do? They need to print a whole new menu, okay? But if you think about a supermarket like uh, Sainsbury's or Tesco, um, just think about your local supermarket. How many different like bits of paper there are with prices on them, okay? Now, if prices are going up regularly, say prices are increasing rapidly and they're needing to change the price of things every two to three weeks, just imagine the cost of reprinting all of those um, little stickers, you've got to pay a member of staff to go out and change them around. So there can be costs of high inflation because you've got to reprice your products all the time and that, that takes time and effort, which is money. <coughs> Shoe leather costs are, um, it's an old fashioned uh, thing, but you know, when you've worn a pair of shoes for a long time, the heels get worn down. Now back in the old days, if there was high levels of inflation, you would traipse around a, a market or a town comparing the prices of all the different suppliers. Um, while the internet makes that a lot easier today, I don't literally need to get out and walk from supplier to supplier to compare prices. Um, if there's high inflation, I might think, well, my, my suppliers put the price up by 10%. Let's have a look at what all the other suppliers are offering. And that takes me time, which costs, uh, costs money to the firm in terms of my wages. Um, so, yeah, shoe leather costs are uh, another cost of inflation for businesses. Inflationary noise also occurs. When inflation is high, it becomes much more, you know, I've got a price set in my mind for what's fair, all right? Now, if I'm, for what's fair for my product, now if there's inflation, I might need to put that price up. Is that what a consumer would still consider to be a fair price? Are consumers gonna start like um, uh, looking around? Um, so inefficient choices might be made, or I know, what's a fair price for my raw materials okay if there's high inflation how does that affect it might i say no because the price has gone up 15 percent but actually that's much better than um an alternative deal okay so hopefully you can uh, the final one might lead to a wage price spiral as prices go up your workers are going to want higher wages to afford their cost of living that leads to you having to either increase the wages or um, say no, unfortunately I can't do that and maybe your workers go out on strike. If you increase their wages, your costs go up, maybe you need to put up your prices and we get into a wage price spiral. So again, when we're looking at um, inflation, we need to be thinking of um, what are the opportunities? Are there opportunities, you know, we're in a low inflationary environment, can we borrow money? What are the threats presented? Um, particularly as a result of a high inflationary environment.